Hi guys, Chris Reimer, author of Happy Work. Welcome to episode 34 of Happy Work TV. Um, tell you what, man, I've been letting myself down and you guys down lately. No videos lately. I'm feeling like a kind of feeling like a scrub here a little bit. So uh, I, I greatly apologize. I've got a lot more I need to say before this book comes out. I have a lot to say after the book comes out. We've got a lot more videos to make. It's been uh, it's been a challenge to get in front of the camera. A challenge that I've been. Uh, I've been failing at so uh, good to be back and today I want to make a video and thank someone for making a difference in my life um, five years ago uh, it was January so over five years ago I guess January of 2010 I was still working as a CPA here in st. Louis I had my t-shirt business Rizzo tees uh, up and going and it was going at that time it was going pretty strong and still an accountant though you know during the day and I went and had coffee with someone David Seitman Garland if you guys aren't familiar with him check out his website the rise of the top.com over the years he's had a couple iterations of the site he has uh, gotten himself involved in different aspects of business he wrote a book smarter faster cheaper oh here it is seriously I'm so glad it really was there. I hadn't planned this. Um, so he wrote this book, Smarter, Faster, Cheaper, Non-Boring, Fluff-Free Strategies for Marketing and Promoting Your Business. So at this time, he cared about uh, doing that sort of thing. Uh, now he teaches people how to conduct online courses. And David's a really nice guy. He lives here in St. Louis with me. Um, he lives in the same town as me. That came out weird. Anyway, uh, David did something really interesting back in January of 2010. We had coffee together. I don't ever remember what the reason was. I don't know if I asked him or if he asked me. David was already pretty successful with his online business. I was still building Rizzo Tees and still figuring out my place in the world. Obviously, I hadn't even left accounting yet. And so David gave me some advice that day that really did change things for me. And, you know, I wrote in my acknowledgments about how Gary Vaynerchuk changed my life and Chris Brogan changed my life and lots of people changed my life. And that's just how it kind of is. It's a complicated uh, web of sorts. But David said something to me back in January of 2010. So over five years ago that really changed. I'm just going to read this to you real quick. Um, if I can find it. I said, David, without you, there is no Rhymer book. Crazy to think. Uh, I met you for coffee on January 19th, 2010. Now, I know the date, not because of like some weird, you know, super photographic memory thing. It's a Google Calendar. I just looked it up. I searched for his name and found it. I just thought it was really cool. I knew the date. So on January 19th, 2010, I met him for coffee. David asked me the following question. Why are you waiting to share your knowledge with the world? And I hadn't started blogging or doing any speaking engagements, not a single one. Now at that time, I wasn't very interested in having my employer know that I had Rizzo Tees and that I was, you know, this uh, up and coming social media personality or whatever. So that was probably one of the reasons that I flew a little bit under the radar. And David challenged that a little bit and also challenged the notion that I brought up in our little coffee meeting that I didn't quite have anything to offer yet. And so as I go on, I said, I. Felt like I needed to accomplish something with Rizzo Tees before anyone would listen. And David told me that that was dead wrong. He said, start sharing now. You know stuff, start sharing it. And so what's really interesting is I feel like in some ways we've come full circle. I like what Gary Vaynerchuk says here about, you know, there's people who want to like build up a personality, but they haven't done a darn thing yet. You know, they, it's a Twitter account and a Facebook account, but like, what do you make? What do you do? What is it that you offer? And so, you know, I felt like at the time I was making t-shirts. I've certainly made this now, which, which pleases me greatly. And I'm hoping it's my strong, meaningful contribution to the world. But, you know, back then, social media, five years younger, we were all still, I mean, we're still figuring it out now. We were still figuring it out back then. And I had figured out just through sheer heavy usage and brute force, basically, I had figured out a lot about social media. David said, start sharing that. I'll go on real quick. I said to him, I said, David, you gave me the confidence to talk about what I believe via Twitter, Facebook, and my blog, and the advice changed my life. It's funny to consider, pay attention to this part, because this is, I think about this stuff all the time. 
It's funny to consider how that morning might have been a throwaway moment in your life while it was a pivot point in mine. For all of us, it goes to show that you never know how much your helping hand will mean to someone else. And I think that, um, you know, when you guys get my book, hopefully you get it and you read it, you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear a lot of advice that I give about, you know, that the little things matter. So there's a little section in the back where I give a whole bunch of advice, you know, where it's like, clean up the dishes in the company sink if no one else has done it, or, you know, hug someone who's down, or help someone who just gets back from vacation sort of dig out of the hole that they're now in because they were gone for seven days. Just little stuff like that. All that stuff, just like negativity adds up, all the positivity adds up as well. And so, you know, for me, that day just was important. I still remember it. Uh, we, we met at, a, at an unnamed coffee location, not the place where I work now. But, uh, you know, we met and w when David said that, it just, it just changed my brain. It just, he changed the way I think in that one moment. So I started blogging and I started speaking and one of the first public speaking engagements I did was at one of David's events. And it was funny too, I remember my good friend Greg Busman was sitting next to me. We're sitting at one of the tables and I'm about to go up there. This whole crowd of people that I'm gonna need to impress. And I used to hate public speaking. And so Greg nudged me and said, hey, you nervous? And I wasn't nervous. It was the craziest thing. It speaks to me this day to know that I was not nervous to go on that stage. And it was David that gave me one of my first speaking engagements. So, um, you know, David and I don't cross paths as much anymore. I don't see him around as much. And, you know, I don't conduct any online courses currently or anything like that. So the, the advice that he used to give, you know, via, via his book is not something that uh, to me seems as central to his life anymore. But David, I just wanted you to know that you probably never even considered this notion, but uh, there was a point five years ago where you spent a little time with me and, you know, helped, uh, helped steer my life in a different direction. Hey guys, that's it for episode 34 of Happy Work TV. I swear we'll do 35 soon. Cheers.